Welcome to the Exodus Cry podcast, where we have honest conversations around exploitation, trafficking, sexual culture, and justice. Okay, so we're back and we are talking this week about the hardcore episode of our Beyond Fantasy docuseries. This is the third and final episode, and it covers the subject of violent pornography. And so just want to dig into this a bit with you today, Helen, to just kind of process what this film is, what people should expect from it, how to process it after seeing it. Um, so at the outset, I think I would just say, first of all, that you know there, there's a question around like, well, why would you do an episode on this? I think the important thing to acknowledge is that violent pornography permeates our world. So just pause on that thought for a second. Like the idea that there are images of women being choked, slapped, punched, abused, raped, uh, spit on, and all kinds of other things under the guise, uh, or in a sexualized context, under the guise of quote-unquote adult entertainment. These images fill the world. So I think it's important for us just to pause on that point alone and to say, okay, this, these images have gotten out there. This is a prominent form of pornography, one of the most watched forms of pornography of all time. And so for our part, just wanting to like comment on that and to give a more critical lens through which uh, people can s- understand what this even is. Yeah. No, I think it's... Uh... It was definitely out of the the investigation that you did in the porn industry, um, the genre of, of barely legal porn, the fetishization of, of of underage girls, and this issue of hardcore extreme violence in pornography emerged as two of the most critical aspects of of porn to to analyze. And so this is yeah the the final episode. It's definitely the most intense, um, the most disturbing film that I've ever seen, but. We just hold such a strong conviction that this is really critical and important to talk about because, like you said, it is um, it is so dominant in porn. It isn't like two um, percent of porn is violent. It's like a significant percentage, um, uh, almost half of pornography, uh, have, depicting one of a, an extremely violent sex act against a woman, and not only depicting it but showing her to enjoy it. Yeah. And um, so this episode. Um, it's 30 minutes long. Um, we we were kind of tremoring with with releasing it because of how dark it is. But this is so important for people to know that this is the reality of what is being depicted in porn. So Exodus Cry exists to break the cycle of commercial sexual exploitation uh, and provide assistance to victims. So this issue ties right in with our mission as an organization, addressing the issue of commercial sexual exploitation. So uh, like I mentioned at the outset, it's important just to consider that there is a you know, very graphic, violent form of sexualized media that is being sp- permeated across the globe. So doing this film for us was, first of all, just an acknowledgement of that, that this is out there. The second thing is is uh, the idea of how do we interpret this? So the, the idea of media literacy. We believe that this genre of pornography warrants analysis, um, criticism, you know, structural analysis, like... Uh, what what is the message behind this? And um, I think that's a question that we don't ask enough. Mm. Um, I think we assume uh, when we are watching any form of media just to kind of check out mentally. Uh, I'm going to this to relax, to chill out, to um, to be entertained, or in the case of pornography, to find some kind of sexual arousal. Uh, so sometimes we just leave our brain at the door when we check into watching media. Well, in the case of our world today, I think part of what we need to understand at more of like a meta level is that there are 
really insidious messages that are being communicated through a lot of the stories in media today. I can't think of a genre of media whose message is more insidious and sabotaging to women, to our humanity, to sexuality, than that of this violent, degrading, humiliating, desecrating um, form of pornography in its depiction of women. And so, um, so that's like a huge factor for us. When we consider that not only is this out there, but then how do we interact with it? And uh, really wanting to help provide a way for people to see this genre through a critical lens, through structural analysis. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that, I would say, is a huge factor for why we decided to make this film in the first place. Again, even just thinking of people out there that are like, man, this is like so intense. Like, why would you, why would you want to make that? I think that question warrants an answer. My bigger question is how and why did this genre get out there in the first place? To an that, in answering that question is, you know, kind of a disturbing bunny trail all on its own. Yeah. And one of the, the prominent people interviewed in the film is Max Hardcore, um, who, you know, the title of the, the episode Hardcore is partly in relation to him. And he really was a, um, a key figure in normalizing this genre of pornography um, and other genres that relate to it. He's in the AVN Hall of Fame. Um, he's seen by other pornographers as a real kind of father um, in this particular type of amateur pornography. Um, and I, just to your last point, I think it's really important for people not only to question, is this, you know, is the ex very existence of this type of violent pornography in any way a good thing, but also thinking through who are the real women depicted in this? Is it really acting um, or is a real rape occurring on set? Um, if A, did someone even give consent to this scene? And even if they signed a paper, are you therefore okay with them being raped, degraded, um, uh, violated? Um, if they are shouting, stop, I can't breathe, or in the scene, are you watching it thinking, oh, this is all acting, um, this is just part of the scene, that they're, they're acting out a rape fantasy, um, or should we be more troubled um, which I would argue, yes, we absolutely should be. Um, people listening might think this sounds absolutely horrific. Like, is this really taking place in porn? Um, and yes, For it sure. absolutely is. <laughs> well, it's it that brings up the human rights aspect of this. Exactly. So, which is another key point is when we first set out to make the series Beyond Fantasy, one of the two primary angles that we are approaching the subject matter from is the human rights perspective. How is this content being created? Mm -hmm. What is the impact on performers? I know the story that we're told the, by the sex industry, which is a cover narrative, which is uh, basically a big lie um, to obfuscate the truth of the harm that exists in the way this content is created um, on the people who are used in it. What we're told, this lie that we're told, is this is all above board. These people, this is just their fetish. They love this. They're making money off of this. They deserve this. The truth is that the backdrop of the creation of most of this content is through the use of coercion, manipulation, all these other things. So um, the very flimsy notion of consent that the porn industry uses just doesn't hold up to any measure of scrutiny mm -hmm. when you begin to talk to the performers and you begin to investigate this. So I think for us, as we investigated the porn industry and as we discovered this, you know, not only that this genre existed, but how it was impacting the women who were being used to create it felt like we had a smoking gun on our hands. Like, wow, nobody would, would 
re- would realize just the extent to which these people are being taken advantage of, abused, like actually raped, um, coerced, all of these things. So um, it's it's a difficult subject matter to talk about uh, and like at all. But the fact that this is going on is the more disturbing thing. And so for us as caring, empathetic people, it's important to wrestle with the human rights implications of this content and to take action against it. So, but I I wanted to touch on that because I think that the human rights aspect of this genre of pornography is a massive issue. Yeah. And I think the reality is as well that under international law around torture, you cannot legally consent to your own torture. And so just because someone signs their name on a piece of paper or gives consent to what they might think they are even going to be doing in a porn scene, what we hear from some of these pornographers is the coercive way they even get um, some of these performers to even engage in the contract. And then their goal is to absolutely push past all of their perceived boundaries on set to steamroll over them, to decimate them, to, um, in Max Hardcore's words, like demolish them. He compares it to a Formula One sport and he wants to capture her shock and her pain um, and boast that some women I have pushed over the limit. And his he thinks that this is beautiful to mm-hmm. capture the abuse um, and pain of a woman on camera. Um And just because someone before doing that scene signed up very possibly and probably under what we show in the film, um, quite coercive means at times, um, real torture is taking place on porn scenes. And, um, And we as a society should be very disturbed by by what is taking place. And not only is it taking place, but it's then being permeated around the world on tube sites, sites like Pornhub, um, and normalized. And uh, children are being exposed to this as their sex education. And um, the extreme violence, like I I did some research with a domestic violence organization about violent pornography and hundreds of thousands of results around some of the most violent terms of torture and strangulation and um, waterboarding. And some of the tags in some of these videos are some of the most violent concepts you could possibly imagine. And domestic violence organizations that are assisting women, victims of this type of sexual violence every day, are like, how is this being celebrated in porn? Not only legal and normalized, but celebrated as a form of women's empowerment. Like violence against women is being rebranded and repackaged as a form of empowerment and um, defended by the porn industry. The the very idea of a rape fantasy being like, well, that's just my fetish. A rape fantasy um, is, is totally normal. Like we absolutely want to challenge some of these things. And it, it absolutely is disturbing. And for anyone who's about to watch this film, like this may well be the most disturbing film you've ever seen. But we're at a critical moment right now in our world where this is being um, normalized and distributed to the masses like never before, distributed to children through smartphones like never for, before. And I'm incredibly grateful for the the courage that it took for you to go into spaces and places and interview folks like Max Hardcore and be exposed to things that have, have broken all of our hearts. I will always remember when you came into um, our, our staff meeting one day and shared about this one scene that you just found um, from investigating Mac, Max Hardcore mm. and just you telling us and describing the scene alone, our entire staff began weeping and we felt the um, the horror and the tragedy of what you were describing and this deep, deep human um, response was, this is not okay. Not only is this happening, the fact that it is being filmed and monetized and uploaded, like we were devastated. And so this film feels like a very personal film. I know for our whole team that have had our hearts broken by the abuse and torture of women in porn. Um, and we're in touch with with several of the survivors who were even you interviewed and we've since connected with. We're providing trauma therapy for them. And I just really want 
our listeners to hear like the human heartbeat behind this film, um, that it comes from a place of deep conviction that um, we are not okay with um, the exploitation and um, an abuse of women taking place in porn in this genre. One of the things that uh, one of these pornographers likens this genre and these women to our Formula One cars. His idea is, you know, in Formula One, you're going to push those car- those cars to the limit, and then sometimes they break. So the very fact that the mindset is to compare sex with a woman to pushing a Formula One car to its breaking point already tells you how off this picture is. Yeah. And for the women who have experienced this, it's not just about being pushed to your breaking point uh, while that is happening. There's a word for that. It's called sexual assault. And yet, because it's the porn industry and because a consent form is signed before the film is shot, there's the idea that, well, it's all just okay. Because it's all, you know, it just ties into, you know, somebody's fetish. You might not like it, but this is kind of our thing, you know, like we're a little more taboo. Uh, You're kind of a prude. Like, it's just like, no, no. This isn't about you being sexually taboo and us being prudes. This is about the sexual assault of women. Yeah. A criminal act that the porno industry has gotten away with for decades. There's a reckoning coming. And so we are putting this film out there as a wake-up call to the masses concerning the criminal nature of violent pornography and the reckoning that this should bring for the porn industry. Yeah. And for some of the folks that watched it in our focus groups, they were so shocked and devastated and outraged by what this film shows that um, several people wrote in their feedback forms, I don't think I could ever watch pornography again. Like pulling back the veil on the real violence. Like we called this series Beyond Fantasy because not only are we critiquing this form of a fantasy, but showing that for the real women involved, it isn't just a fantasy. Their their, their bodies are literally being um, ravaged and um, harmed and assaulted. Like it is real assault taking place on these porn scenes. Um, and when we spoke to some of the women about the coercive nature of how these scenes even got to take place, we realized like this, some of these women were not only trafficking victims, but the way that individuals like Max Hardcore are coercing them to even be involved in hip. Like there is some serious, I mean, talk about ethical concerns yeah. taking place. And I remember doing an outreach to the, uh, at the AVN Expo in Las Vegas and in the BDSM section, there were all these leather whips, um, tables with leather, leather whips. There was a woman who was tied up um, like a, you know, hog tied, I think is the, the term, in the corner with her arms tied up, um, bending over. And there was a line of, of men lined up to test out these different types of leather whips by whipping her. And I walked past, we were there doing outreach, giving gifts and care packages to women, offering them uh, free therapy and legal services and just being there as a support. And I walked past and I was offered, oh, do you want to try um, one of our new, our new brand of leather whip? And it was one of those moments where I looked at the person, I looked over and saw what was taking place. This woman's back was red raw from this line of men lining up to whip her. And it was almost like the emperor's new clothes type of situation of, oh yeah, this is totally normal. This is fine. In that moment, my thought was, she may be paid to be doing this. The question beyond um, her, even her consent, and, and, and even I would love to know her story of how she ended up being tied up and whipped in a, uh, a BDSM corner at the AVN Expo. I was so troubled seeing this. Like, are we at a, a place where this is normal to all of these men to line up to test out whips and whip a woman. Like, where has this normalization come from? It's come from this being depicted in the porn that they are consuming to be, to the point where they're completely desensitized to this type of violence against women. And I think that in this culture, it, like you said, it is seen as prudish to challenge violence in 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 sexual relationships. And I think 
in in a culture and context where sexual assault is at an all-time high, where we're having to um, provide lifelong therapy for victims of violence and, um, and assault and trafficking and rape, we need to be questioning some of the roots of where this is coming from and really challenge the normalization of it in our culture and the idea that young men are being exposed, their first sexual imprint is watching a video of a woman very possibly being actually raped in porn and that being their their sexual imprint and awakening of this is what sex is and they're seeing the response from a woman being in porn that she likes this, she wants this. Um, therefore, I therefore assume choking and strangling and hitting a woman Or she normal. doesn't. Or she's crying and in distress and that is meant to be hot. So, right. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing has turned into a circus show. We live in a generation of weak, apathetic, spineless men who pass themselves off as cool for watching porn. When I think about the things that piss me off in this world, one of them, and I would say one of the main things that piss me off is these weak, spineless, pathetic excuse for people who call themselves men passing themselves off as being cool because they're just down with porn, bro. Like the idea that like you're a prude, but you know, we're, we're edgy. We're bad boys. We're, we're kind of like, you know, we're, we're down. We're like, we're cool. It's just kind of like cavalier attitude around porn and just the normalization of it. Uh, the idea that, that like that, like that's cool. It pisses me off uh, that this notion of manhood is being passed off as cool. What's really cool is agency. <laughs> What's really cool is authentic consent, which is called mutuality. Mm -hmm. Not bribing somebody's consent through money, um, doing something that is utterly an assault of someone's humanity than calling it edgy. No, what's cool is what do you like? What are you interested in? What's cool is enhancing someone's humanity and dignity, not stripping it away from them and then passing it off as being edgy and cool. Uh, our notion of what is cool in today's world is so utterly twisted and distorted by pornography. And then the mainstream shills and media keep shoving it down our throat so that a generation growing up who doesn't have media literacy will internalize this into believing that this is cool and this is what I need to do to be cool. I need to get choked out and gang raped and like, you know, participate in these like gang bangs and all this and that. We have to just completely redefine what we view as cool. Mm -hmm. Humans are awesome. Like, have like, why aren't we considering enhancing and honoring each other's humanity and creating space for mutuality in the context of our relationship as a means to pursue what we think is cool? Like it. So this episode will shatter the paradigm and the notion that this is anything to do with being uh, you know, a cool, edgy form of pornography. No, it's just straight up evil. Yeah. It is straight up sexual assault, coercion. It's twisted perversion. It's offloaded. It's the existential psychic offloaded uh, pain, alienation, humiliation, and perversion and hopelessness of men onto women who have no choice to, but to receive it because their own subjectivity has been completely eradicated and now they exist as nothing more than a receptacle for men's offloaded perversity. It's horrific. It is utterly horrific. Yeah. And even hearing from the different directors and producers who are creating this, and there's one moment off camera where Max Hardcore is kind of jokingly saying, you know what these like these meat muppets want to really just be demolished or something like that. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like what? This is what they said off camera. He goes, what the public, he didn't know we were recording. What the public don't understand is these are just meat muppets that need to be destroyed. Talking about women. Yeah. Yeah. 
And he said, well, they, they might be, I don't know, they might be recording me now. It was an off-camera right. conversation that was still being recorded. But he almost was like, I don't even care if they're recording me. I, you know, women in porn are meat muppets to be destroyed. Yeah. And that is the the pornographer's perspective and fantasy. Um, the, the one scene- and men, at, and men at home that are paying to consume this, get aroused by it and masturbate to it. And then go have sex with their wife and have a daughter that they're going to plan to raise. Yeah. The the one scene that I mentioned earlier that like our, impacted our staff so intensely when you shared about it, um, we include a clip from that scene and it's actually animated. Um, people know the scene that I'm talking about, and we we wanted to protect the the identity of that that individual um, while still showing what happened to her because um, this isn't an isolated incident. This is something that's happening all the time in, in porn. Um, but Max Hardcore references that scene and we found the real scene that he's speaking about and show just the, the smallest clips from it that show the devastation to that young woman, um, that show uh, this is exactly what he's speaking about when he's talking about, I push women over the limit. Um, and I just know that that the visceral reaction to this film, people are going to feel angry. They're going to feel the same visceral anger that you feel, that I feel. This is not okay. And I think that is a correct response. That is a human response. When we see suffering, when we see things that are evil, we shouldn't just shrug our shoulders and be like, well, if there's a fetish for it, if there's an appetite for it, if that's what some people find kinky, like we should be heartbroken that the abuse um, of humans is happening in this way and that people are making money out of it and building an entire empire and um, industry from it. Yeah. Um, I, I really want the, the, this episode to inspire um, activism and change, but just to, to even acknowledge that people are going to be disturbed and grieved by it like we were. And that is... Um, that is the correct response to human trafficking. That is the correct response to rape, to the abuse, um, to all the things that this episode is uncovering. Um, and I, I, in a way, it's okay to feel permanently scarred by something. I would rather be scarred by something and then be um, activated to change it and actually um, know what's taking place than go through life um, wanting to completely close my eyes and block my ears to the suffering of others. Okay, children are being exposed to pornography in ways like never before. The impact is on mental health of young people of pornography is like never before. Uh, women are being abused in porn like never before. I think it's important and especially um, as an empathetic human and as um, a person of faith that we have our eyes open to this. The story of the Good Samaritan, um, you know, the religious folks were the ones who didn't want to get involved. They didn't want to see the the messy, bloody, dangerous situation um, of the, uh, the, the man left for dead on the road to Jericho. But it was the person who responded with empathy, who had their eyes open to someone who was half naked or possibly naked in a dangerous situation, covered in mud and blood. They responded, they got involved, they had their eyes open. And so I just want to even encourage people that it's uh, our heart by even showing this, the tip of the iceberg, what we show. Um, yes, it is utterly horrific and we are aware of how horrific it is. Um, but there's the invitation to have compassion, to feel anger by the injustice taking place and get involved, intervene and say, we need to do something. We need to hold the individual's accountable um, and we need to challenge what is taking place in pornography. The thought and the idea that there are people who are consuming this content uh, by the droves around the world and that it's informing at some level their sexuality is a really horrifying picture. Right. I just don't think it's possible to, and I'll speak to the male demographic. I don't think it's possible for men to be whole human beings while also participating in the consumption of this content. 
this type of content is so fracturing to our conception of what it means to be a man and to our conception of sexuality and to who women are that I actually don't think it's possible to be human. It's to be a whole person while also consuming this. And yet, as I said earlier, we have people who are watching this content, being aroused by it, masturbating to it, getting off on it, and then going and raising daughters. These men who are consuming this are raising daughters. It's a horrifying and troubling picture of where we are at as a society right now and where do we go from here. And so this film sounds an alarm. Some people would be more offended by the alarm that we're sounding in the film than they are by the actual content that's being created. And I don't really know what to tell those people. I just know my commitment and sense of obligation is to sound the alarm. And we hear it from both sides, you know, because uh, I, yeah, we hear it from religious people. We hear it from secular people. We're in this very unique space. We feel it is our job to sound an alarm, to wake people up. My hope is that those who are consuming this, it will be a wake-up call for them, a moment of self-reflection to help break the cycle of pornography consumption. And I hope they hear and understand that you, you cannot be a whole human being uh, while also consuming this content. So there's that. Uh, there's uh, the issue of the public health crisis. So, you know, when we set out to do this, we want to address from a public health and a human rights standpoint. And I think from the public health standpoint is the idea of how porn is impacting consumers. I think that is, you know, part of what we're talking about and a consideration for people um, as they watch this is to consider young children that are being exposed to this content as their first form of exposure to sexuality at all and the impact that that has on them. Um, so to kind of just, you know, wrap up this conversation, I, I want to just take a brief moment to talk about, okay, so you've seen this film and how do you process this? And I think that for me, the natural response is to grieve. Like, I know that's not like a fun idea, but when we're confronted with the real tragedy of something like this and part of what our world has become. And as you mentioned earlier, not just that this is out there, but the celebration of it as women's empowerment or the celebration of it as a liberated sexuality or the celebration of it in the way that the porn industry pats themselves on the back and gives themselves all these awards for the creation of the best gangbang or whatever it is, like the celebration of it and the passing it off by individuals as being cool. So like if you're in like, a, you know, if you're on the such and such podcast, the such and such podcast, like I'm done with porn, it's so cool, cool dude. Like the idea that like this is like cool, like all of that like needs to be grieved. Yeah. Like your 2 million followers on Instagram of your podcast doesn't validate your belief that you're somehow cool for being down with this content. It needs to be grieved, not celebrated. For us, we, you know, we have connected with the plight and the tragedy of the people who have been affected by this. Helen, you, you know, you talk to these people, you walk alongside of them as they try to repair their lives from being destroyed in this industry. And so I think that would be just the first thing is like, in terms of like, how do I process this? I would just say, let the grief strike your heart deeply and sit with it for a period of time. Don't try to make that go away. Like genuinely grieve what is happening. Yeah. Like for me, this entire journey of fighting human trafficking began with letting my heart grieve for even entering into the suffering and pain and um, weeping like face down on my floor for several hours. Um, I've never cried about anything so much in my life and I just know that um, after seeing this film you may want to cry and 
I've I sometimes cry after I've seen different cuts of it um and I know some of the real women you know that we interview in this film and I know the 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 cost and the courage for them bringing forth their story and this film is for them this film is for every woman who's been abused in porn and every woman who's been a victim of a violent sexual assault and it is that that we are challenging um pornography is the marketing force behind human trafficking every sex buyer that you've interviewed um had a long standing uh, porn addiction and specifically to violent content that led them into violent directions um and i i just really want people to realize that we're taking on something that is is so huge and so important and if you're feeling angry and feeling offended be offended by the perpetrators and um the marketers and the cele- those who celebrate this kind of content and violence um we want to see people get free from addictions consuming it um and we just know how how horrific this subject matter is that the two driving forces that I've often felt that drive me and you in this work is is this sense of anger at injustice and abuse and a deep sense of compassion and valuing human beings and it's those forces it's like this dual fire that takes place and if you're hearing this you know you can feel the anger that we feel the anger um isn't against the people being abused in porn it's the anger against um a the the forces behind this industry and those that are gaslighting women and the world into believing that violence in porn is is okay is good is to be celebrated that the rape fantasy is to be celebrated um we are angry knowing the 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 lifelong trauma and tragedy that ensues um from some of the women who are uh, exploited and exposed in this and the um the the children and families that we've heard from in the last few years who's the child's first um sexual exposure was watching content like this so there's a very real anger at the abuse and injustice that we feel and a very deep compassion and conviction that uh, we want to fight back against this and so i hope that that conviction really comes comes across um and we want to just encourage people like feel free to to reach out to us after watching the film um the our, our website beyond fantasy hosts all three of these episodes and we have a petition and open letter from real people in the porn industry including some people who were in the film um ways that you can take action um because we want to see change um and we want to see even people in the porn industry have a moment where they're like this isn't okay and and fight against it like if you were in the porn industry in any capacity and watch this film please reach out to us like you will like i i would love to have a conversation with you and um and and, and talk through some of this and i hope it's a wake up call honestly and so uh we encourage people watch this film uh grieve it stop consuming it take action against it. Let's redefine what is cool in this generation centered around honoring each other's humanity, centered around uh mutuality, dignity, valuing each other, not showing contempt towards women, but showing respect towards women. Let's raise our daughter with those values, let's raise our sons with those values. Let's establish a new culture that honors each other's humanity and stops playing games pretending that um uh evil is good and good is evil and all these gymnastics that we do to try to justify and rationalize this disturbing violent abusive form of pornography here here beyondfantasy.com you can check out all our podcast episodes articles and films at exoduscry.com and join the daily conversation by following exoduscry on all major social platforms <laughs>